Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to set your notifications all so you never miss a future upload. Another day, another drama, and today we're going to be talking about Miss Gabby Hanna yet again. If you haven't seen my previous video titled Gabby Hanna Hates Drama, I will link that in a card up over here, as well as down in the description box down below, so definitely make sure you go and check that out as well. Alright, let's go ahead and get on into it. The other day, Gabby Hanna uploaded a three minute video to her YouTube channel where she says that she was wrong. Let's go ahead and take a look at her statement real quick before we start to talk about it. September 15th, 2020 at 9.49 AM. I was wrong. I thought I was doing the best thing at the time, but now I see that I wasn't. I truly, truly don't like drama. I wish it didn't exist. However, I do try to make the best of drama. I think the main thing is I have a very different experience and view living it than all the people passively watching it. To me, this isn't starting or rehashing anything. To me, this is taking a negative situation that already exists and continues to exist and make a positive situation out of it. Something that might not be super obvious to everyone else is that while it may be quote unquote cold tea to the world, it takes me a long time to process stuff. I need to take major steps back to collect myself, sort out how I'm actually feeling, organize my thoughts, and articulate it in a way that isn't damaging to myself or anybody else. While the world was forgetting about it and getting bored, I was still very much dealing with the aftermath. I don't like to respond to something until I've healed from it, and usually healing from it for me means creating music or art. When I don't take that time to process, well, we saw what happens when I speak before processing, cue the high school bullies clip. That's always been my survival method. Make your tragedies a work of art or whatever. It always felt like if I can make this situation into something emotionally beneficial for me, then everything will have been worth it. Like, maybe I can reshape the situation in my head. This wasn't just a terrible thing I went through, this was the inspiration and driving force behind this wonderful thing I made. And that being said, I don't need to talk about it all the time. I can just create the thing and let that be it. I can allow that healing portion of it be just for me and be proud of what I've made. As much as I love to explain the inspiration behind my music, some things don't need to be spoken. I'm still trying to figure out the line between, quote, engaging in drama and defending myself. Sometimes it really does feel, from my end, that people are allowed to say whatever they want about me, but if I respond in any way, then I'm, quote, stirring the pot. Or if I express my side or that it's hurt me, I'm playing the victim. I do believe there's a fair difference between starting drama and allowing someone to walk all over you. When you're a kid, they teach you how to deal with bullies, hold the eye rolls, please, stand up to them, be confident, set boundaries, strike when the iron is cold. This is and has been, whether people see it or not, bullying. It's just normally dealt with in a principal's office and not on YouTube and TikTok. So I dealt with it in the way I teach my little siblings to deal with bullies. So, on one hand, I don't feel comfortable setting the example that you shouldn't defend yourself when someone is mocking, harassing, or spreading rumors about you. But on the other, it doesn't feel like I've set the right example in giving this attention the way that I did. I'm still processing this as well, so I'm sure I'll find the answer in a few months to a year or so. All I know right now is I don't feel good about it, so there's probably something wrong. I saw a quote for the umpteenth time this week that keeps throwing itself in my face and I keep forgetting about it. Quote, learn to be okay with people not knowing your side of the story. It has been one of the more challenging lessons that, like, I'm learning it, but for some reason keep failing the test. Hopefully, the remnants of my ego will die sooner than later. Anyway, I'm sorry for sending so many mixed messages in the last few weeks. I realized that my actions aren't aligning with my words. I saw this move as something that would hopefully smooth over a situation that seems to be never ending. But if I was a wiser woman or had a drop of common sense, I would have realized that the one thing that won't end it is continuing it. There's not many people who can give advice in these situations because, realistically, not many people have lived this experience or could even fully imagine it. I'm kind of flailing trying to figure it out on my own. I appreciate all your patience with me as I navigate whatever the it is that I'm doing. I promise that moving forward, I'll try to handle it in a way that makes me feel more proud and gives you something to be proud of. Thank you for all your love and kindness. Peach out. Okay, so the first issue that I have with this statement is that it's a, literally a notepad text and it's not just her on camera talking about the situation. Why can you write this out and not get on camera and speak it? Even if you just sat there and read everything that you just wrote out, it's better to get on camera and say it than to have to make your fans come out and actually read it. 
And on top of that, when I was actually reading it, I had to do a screenshot of the actual video and then zoom in on it because I wasn't able to read it on my phone. So anybody watching on their phone most likely isn't going to be able to read it unless they screenshot it and go in and zoom in on it. Otherwise you have to like watch it on your TV so you can actually see the text. So I don't know if she actually thought about that. And how many people are actually going to go into her video, see that it's nothing but a giant block of text on the screen and stop and read it. I doubt that there's going to be a ton of people who actually did that. I know that the video at the time that I'm recording this has like 275,000 views, but how many of the people who actually went and viewed that video took the time to actually read out the entire text, which is why I didn't just include a screenshot for you guys. I read the entire thing out so that way you didn't have to. But again, that's something that Gabby didn't think about. Now let's go ahead and go on to her talking about responding to her bullies. Now, I believe that you should be able to respond to your bullies. If somebody is talking about you or if somebody is spreading rumors about you, then yes, you have the right to respond. You can respond without stirring the pot. But let's not forget that it was you who was spreading the rumors about Trisha having her which is why Trisha responded in the first place. And then that's when you guys were really going back and forth over the past year. So she was responding to you, who you then were spreading rumors about her. Now let's also talk about how all of this started right before Gabby left for her social media break. She responded to a screenshot of Nick Snyder's video where he said that she had lost her mind on Twitter, a common phrase that's used for somebody who just flies off the handle, and she took that as him attacking her mental health. So then that's when all of the drama between the drama channels and Gabby Hanna started when they were starting to share inappropriate photos of Nick Snyder, her underage fans were, and then Gabby decided that she wanted to call out Dustin for using crocodile tears when he was talking about the passing of his sister. So she was starting more drama with the drama channels than she was quote unquote defending herself. So let's just keep that 100 right there. And then on top of that, now that she is back, she's releasing her new single that is about Trisha Paytas, which is new stuff. It's not something that was old. Nobody knew about this song, so it's not like she's saying, oh, this is something that was old. Yeah, you might have wrote this song for Trisha last year or two years ago or whenever you wrote it, but nobody knew about it. So the fact that you're releasing it now because it's your art and you want people to hear it, you're the one that is stirring up drama because this is about somebody who you clearly don't get along with. And it turns out that it looks like this single is called Call Me Crazy because she says that it's dropping on September 25th and she has now turned her Twitter name into Call Me Crazy. So she has no issue now with people calling her crazy, but yet when Nick Snyder said that she lost her mind on Twitter, she had a huge problem with that. So she's clearly capitalizing off of all the drama, even though she says that she doesn't like drama, but she does say in all that text that yes, she will take the drama and turn it into a positive thing for her if she can. So clearly she has no problem profiting off drama that is coming her way. I mean, Gabby Hanna can say that she doesn't like drama all she wants, but the fact that you're going to then take that drama, turn around, and then use it to profit off of shows that you really don't mind it that much if you're willing to use it to make money. If you had that big of a problem with all the drama, then leave it all behind. Don't turn around and use it to make any money. I would love to know what you guys think about Gabby Hanna's statement, as well as all of the drama that she's been involved recently down in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. Also, if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button and hit the bell icon and set your notifications to all so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. All right, that's everything for today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!